Oh, no, that's, that's okay. This is actually, uh, actually good stuff. Okay. What had happened with the accident is when the, when the rocket took off, right, uh, it had uh, some kind of a, uh, some parachutes that they were going to be, once he, parachutes were supposed to come out to let the rocket land. Right. When it took off, the forces so much the parachutes blew out. Okay. And, and, the, and, the, and the, the flame burned them off, you know. And some and and what happened is that he it went up, and uh, he saw the land, and I can I don't know this is just a long time ago. The bottom line was is that he 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 jumped out, but he was supposed to have been on the other side. The rocket was supposed to land there, and he was supposed to land there. Right. He was right over the center of the water, and he came down, just like that, on one of these rock cliffs. With his parachute, and if he would hit any of the sides, that he'd been dead. Right. Because his his chute would have collapsed, and he'd been on solid rock, and he would have fallen. But just by luck, by the grace of God, he went all the way down, and he landed right on the water. There was a boat down there, and picked him up just because it was there watching. Right. <laughs> but I mean, hey, I would I mean, you know, he was very lucky to be alive. Because he you know, many times over, <laughs> without a I doubt. Mean, to get, yeah, right. But he got on that. He got he got in there, and whoosh, there it was. And, wow, what a thing! <laughs> All right. And they had a big motorcycle the day before. It was an international motorcycle race. People from all over the, over the world were there for a special thing. Right. So that all motor, motorcyclists were all over everything. I had the whole thing filmed on Super Eight. So it's a little thing. Okay, I'll hold one of you up, and uh, I've got this taken care of. And Excellent. I've got my appointment at... That's not the right time. It's, no, no, it's 1 o'clock. It's, uh, oh, I, I, see, I, I didn't two. bother with daylight savings. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm way ahead then. I don't have until 2 o'clock. Yeah, it's just 1 o'clock. Yeah, well, now you settle down, Wookie. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, here you go, you settle down. He just gets so excited when new people come in. Yeah, I can see. He, had, he brought his ball out and everything else, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you did. You got your ball and everything. You're a big boy. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Six will be seven in uh, February, January, February, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. We don't have an exact birth date, but... Uh, okay. Well, he's a friendly guy, or she. Is he? Is he? Yeah, yeah. He's a friendly guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. Good boy. Well, how, do you, how do you exercise? Yeah. How do you, uh, whatever you can. How do you, uh, because he'd like to run, I know. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we, we try and go on daily walks, and uh, oh. roughly two miles. And then... Oh, that's good. As often as I can, I get him down to the peninsula. Uh, he loves the winter, because there's so few people I can let him off, and he can run. Uh, oh, when there's yeah. people there, he's uh, he's he's good with people that are good with dogs, but he can tell when people don't like dogs or they're afraid, and yeah, it doesn't go well. So yeah, that's true. I know that. Was, you know, uh, I have, I have I've had them all my life. I, I see you have a cat too, and I had a, I had dogs and cats at the same time. Three cats. Um, so you've probably seen the yeah. orange one. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's yeah. four. And uh, his sister is Freya. Even though Freya was Thor's wife, I think, in in the mythology. And then we have Eden, which is Ifun, which is also one of the Norse gods. You won't see her. She's they all have very different personalities. She's the private cat. She won't come out if anyone's here. Thor, he'll come and check you out. Mm. Uh, Freya will come and check you out from a distance. But mm. are you in Norse mythology are interested in that or is it a nationality of some kind or oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. I'm doing her. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, most of my people are from the British Isles, Scotland, Ireland, and you know, of course, we've got a lot of background with uh, the Vikings and mm -hmm. and that sort. So there's quite a bit in my history. Well, I, I'm a mythology person. I, I've been reading it all my life. I started with Greek mythology. Yep. Way back in sixth grade or something like that and I just loved it and I read every single thing I could read on it you know yep same here and 
And then I moved into other mythology too. They, I, I found it interesting, you know. So I'm somewhat familiar with, with, with the Norse. Well, it's been a lot of years now, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I just I've always just absolutely loved mythology, you know. A lot of fun, good stories, and it's uh, you know as I got older, I started looking at you know the comparisons of where they crossed over, who stole from what, as far as their storylines, yeah. and it went from the mythologies to the religions. Um, yeah. yeah, of course, the funk religions are kind of mythologies now too, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Especially you get into the uh, you know Babylonians and Egyptians, and you get the whole yeah. political world there with that kind of stuff. But that you know the Roman to the Greek is a straight shot. That's the you know that's very easy yeah. with how that with how that works. Really. And then uh, and then it's a whole different thing as I got involved with uh, yoga quite a number a number of years ago. And so got into the to the Hindu aspect and now you're talking with numbers <laughs> it's a whole different story they're great but you you know you gotta you, you gotta keep on going there's just so many you know this refers to this and this and this and the greek do the same thing but i got you know they're, they're related with everything you know there's uh <laughs> it's good it's good luck now you're attacking yeah it's good looking kid. Yeah, yeah. A beautiful orange tiger cat. Well, we originally went to get his sister because uh, I saw the oh, picture well. of his sister, and she was a uh, she had a tortoise shell, but she's gray. Uh -huh. And uh, we were sitting there watching them play, and it's like that's a bonded pair. We can't split them up, so we ended up taking Ooh. him with. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, they've been they've been awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's good for dogs and cats to be together. I mean, they help each other out. Oh yeah. Well, this one here, he thinks he's a dog, <laughs> and uh, he'll lay down with Loki. He'll play with his ball, and uh, but Freya, she's a, a quintessential cat's cat. She she tolerates the dog. Yeah, they. You're right. The personalities are. Yeah. They're, I used to walk. Remember, I get them at different times. I I remember got a had a puppy, and uh, I know that they start playing with a cat. And, but the the, cat, the dog would grab it by the when it was getting grab it by the neck and drag it along, and it didn't oh. care. It didn't care. It was all, you know, it was all a game. It was all a you know, they didn't hurt. It wasn't a hurt bite. It was with a play, and then get a hold of some fur and pull it. You know, and then we got tired of the play. Just jump up and look at them. Like, you these people are nuts. Look at those. <laughs> you can see the look in their face. Well, they're, they're, they're crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, thank you very much, Edward. I appreciate it. We okay. get forward to we'll start me back to reading my books now. There you go. All right. We'll probably see you in about a month. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, probably will probably finish this for that. Yeah. I'm having a. I'm having surgery next Wednesday. Okay. Total knee replacement. Oh wow. So I'm going to be down for. I don't know how long. We're gonna find For out. Quite a while. Uh, I had um, they did surgery on a torn meniscus, yeah. and it took yeah I had longer than I expected to heal from that. Yeah, uh, yeah but I'm hearing good news. I've had my brother had another friend of mine had it. You know, have to kind of get over the hump, then you, you move to the cane, to the walker, to the cane, to being careful. You know, because you don't want to fall or do anything to re-injure that. Yes. You, know, you definitely don't want to do anything for infection, so it has to be well sold. But what I'm hearing pretty much after like about a month, people are, within a month, they're pretty much running around, around, you know, just, just not kneeling and stuff. Right, right. It'll take another six, seven, eight months until yep. things get together. I don't know. So it's my first major surgery, so I'm a little anxious about it. But well, best of luck to you with that. Okay, okay thank you again so yeah. much. See you, Loki. <laughs> All right. Bye -bye. Hello, this is Edward Kranz, the Honey Badger Binder of Book Forge. Uh, so, by the nature of having a candid camera and starting at a particular time, uh, you get to witness whatever's going on in my bindery at that time. And uh, I had a client drop off a few books, um, not necessarily books of significant value, uh, but they're books that he wanted in a readable condition. And uh, these guys are gonna get uh, just a basic um, cloth rebinding 
Um, so we'll be doing that in the very near, fu near future. Actually, we've got a third one here, which um, these will just get rebound. This one here is going to have uh, the spine cleaned and uh, and resewn and everything. So. I have not checked that the audio is working, which seems to be a problem that plagues me. And so in a minute here, I'm going to check the feed and make sure you have audio. I know people, they don't hear audio and then they tune out and I don't want to see that. So I'm going to take, see if I've got a spot for this. Oh, we still have something in you, don't you? Yes, that's something I need to start probably today. All right, I'm out of boxes. I'm going to see your box. Where are you? Ah, okay. I can retire you. I'll show you something cool. Well, I think it's cool. I'm pretty happy with it. So, these in there. And I'm just going to set these back here for now until I find a home for them. Noisy. All right, so, how's everybody doing out there? Uh, while I'm checking the audio quality, uh, I'd like to, uh, first of all, Thank all of my patrons here on Patreon, those who have subscribed to a tier. Um, it helps me out greatly. Uh, I've got some really cool stuff planned in the coming year, and your subscription uh, goes towards making those plans possible. And why can I not? There we are. And Okay, so we got good audio. Pretty happy with that. So I've started playing around with uh, the equalizer and the compressors and the, uh, the basically the dynamics of the audio to help make it a little bit better. Um, so I'm hoping that we don't have audio problems in the future. Okay, so my place is a mess right now. I'm a mess. Um, woke up with a headache. I'm not making excuses, just telling you where I'm at. Uh, so I'm going to be tidying up a little bit, and I'll be talking about some projects. Um, I think tomorrow I have a post of before and after pictures of... So this guy brought in um, a book, and it was, you can see it's, it's lovely condition, um, it was a medical journal, it was probably a good six, six and a half inches thick, and uh, it had some water damage, um, the, the spine was completely gone, it looked like it might have been eaten by mice. It would look like it was nibbled at. So I had to do extensive paper repairs. Um, I personally probably would have went online to try and find another uh, copy of it. But uh, So I took that six inch book uh, and at the client's request, I gave it, broke it up into two volumes. Uh, so it was a little bit more manageable and uh, they came out lovely. Um, Historically, I've always struggled with gold tooling. Um, so these came out, the labels came out beautifully. Um, and I'm very happy with that. I mean, the, the binding is just a regular uh, quarter leather case binding. Um, Capanella book cloth, which is a really nice um, cotton linen blend. Uh, it's very sturdy, but it has this really fun textural feel to it and uh, so 
So these are the books. And I put new end bands and everything on it. Uh, so I think the client will be pretty, pretty happy. I've got to call him and let him know his books are pretty much done. And that's what this stuff is. This all goes with these guys. I know, I'm not supposed to turn my back to the camera. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm working on how I'm going to shoot uh, future videos. And uh, I'm mainly concerned about, I want to start ramping up the educational aspect of this. And I want to be, I want to shoot more tutorial styles. I want to still keep them uh, candid and, and, and light, uh, kind of like these kind of conversations that I have with you guys. Uh, but I want to focus on uh, the how-to and the structures and uh, what to do, what not to do. I want to be able to answer the questions, why do we do it this way? Um, I look at a lot of amateur book binders and especially uh, fanfic book binders who ask these questions of, well, how do I do this? And it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, to be able to tell someone, oh, well, you just do this, it's kind of difficult without the visual and you know, a lot of different books. Um, sometimes they're printing these books in individual sheets. Sometimes they're printed in some sort of booklet form. Um, yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, and I hate answering, I don't hate answering the questions. I hate answering the questions over and over again. Uh, and they ask the same questions and um, because they haven't learned the process. A uh, little bit of history on me. Back uh, in the day when I started, I used to work with several um, booksellers. And I would help people find hard to find books. Um, and this was before Google was a thing or a big thing. I think it was just starting out uh, around the same time. And uh, well, I was also a book collector. I was always an avid reader. Uh, I read less today because of my eyes and my uh, I have massive ADHD, uh, neurodivergent to the core. And uh, since the heart attack, whether it was the heart attack the fact that I'm getting older, the medications I'm on, um, or a combination of all these things, uh, my, uh, my uh, issues with ADHD uh, have uh, exploded. So I had a lot of things that I developed, um, little tips and tricks, little coping mechanisms to deal with neurodivergent issues. And now my neurodivergent issues have gone to a point where my tips and tricks don't work. I used to write things in notebooks. Well, now I don't even look at the notebooks or I can't find them or I don't remember that I even wrote it down to look. Um, it, okay, so we're getting off on a, on a tangent. So, but the, my point is, is I really want to ramp up these educational videos and gear them towards a lot of these questions that these amateurs and fanfic binders uh, or even fellow book binders uh, might want to know. And uh, so I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be working on some slightly different lighting. Uh, I know having a backlit window isn't always ideal. I don't have lighting coming this way. I've got these glaring LED lights in my chandelier. Um, I'm a huge fan of indirect lighting uh, underneath the table, uh, up around the ceiling. Um, I've got some behind my uh, my toolboxes. They just illuminate the wall behind the toolboxes, which is kind of fun. And I'm trying to do something over here, but I haven't quite figured out how that's going to look in the future. Um, but I want to be able to close those drapes and light the background in such a way that they're cool and I pop out because I'm warm. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so point is trying to come up with a way of filming these better, better camera angles. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff I'm trying to figure out. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop rambling for a few minutes, and I'm going to tidy up because uh, too much visual chaos is uh, it's really bad for me, but I think in a workplace, the more neat and organized you have your space, 
the less distraction there is, the less chaos there is, the easier it is for you to focus on your work. And I need to do that. So I'm going to clear this bench. I'm going to sit some stuff over here. Uh, and that way we can focus on what's going on in this bench. Um, I do have a camera over here. So when I start my bench work in this session, um, you'll be able to, to see a little bit more clearly what I'm doing because I know that camera is kind of off in the distance for this. Um, my, uh, my switch, my video switch, uh, it's equipped for four cameras. Um, I have two that work really well. I can hook a GoPro up to this, um, but it, the battery dies pretty quick, so I'm not really thrilled with that aspect. Um, I'm trying to get into a position where I can buy one or two uh, full-frame mirrorless cameras. They're expensive, and the last few months have been a, a financial drain on me between it took time it took to shut down for the move, the move, setting back up. I'm just now, uh, I have that set of books that I'm delivering. I got a couple of children's books over there I'm delivering. So I'm just now ramping up to get some work done. But, you know, it was a huge interruption of my, my personal cash flow, let alone uh, funding for whatever I'm doing here. So as we move forward, uh, yeah, I'm going to... get some light there all right so yeah this was a project I was going to start today um, but I haven't found from the move I haven't found my uh, my heat gun and this has a rubber uh, heat activated glue on it and yeah Using a hair dryer on this just is not going to work. So, uh, this was uh, this is a client's uh, Beatles, complete Beatles music book. Um, great, it's got piano and uh, guitar chords and all that good stuff. I'm not even sure which way that goes. But I'm not going to be able to start this today until I find that heat gun and. It's more than likely in the garage or in one of these boxes I have not unpacked yet. Uh, I have one of my clients brought me this lovely uh, Sinking of the Titanic book. She wants it functional for her son. And uh, so that's something that we'll be working on today. That's actually in this press. So the spine got cleaned yesterday and uh, we're going to do a uh, lumbar binding on it. Uh, we're not worried about following a lot of the rules of conservation restoration. They simply want it functional. Um, so I glued out the spine yesterday and we're going to put end papers on it. We'll do, uh, we'll do after we do the lumbar binding. Um, and we'll get that ready. I have to do some work on the case. Uh, this is some paste, uh, starch, wheat starch, and a piece of bungee paper, which I do my paper repairs with. This is methyl cellulose, which I use to do the paper repairs. I can also use starch paste in place of it, or I mix it. All right. Let's get these out of the way. I need to go check the switch. Oh, well, maybe not yet. Uh, what I do is I got a chair here, which will make working back here difficult. Uh, 
All right, so this plate goes with this book. All right. Um, so this camera, let me go do the, uh, the inset thing. Be right back, don't go away. All right, looks like I already had the inset thing going. Um, what I'm doing isn't <clears throat> necessarily gonna need a lot of so as you can see this paper is, is brittle and it's falling apart. Like I said these these books that I'm working on today aren't meant to be a full restoration. It's more of a, a functional they want to be able to read it. Uh, I, I'm of the opinion you have a book like that uh, what you're going to put into it as far as my costs, um, it's just worth it to go find a good copy online. I, I, you know, I'm not trying to talk people out of paying me. This is my bread and butter. All right, so there's another piece. But this book looks like it may have gone through a fire. Not actually, I don't think it was on fire, but it's definitely crispy. Um, so there's that one. So all I did is I took some Hanji paper and where these are going to go back, I'll tip them in to the spine, and then when we do the lumbac, I'm going to, well, it's not really a lumbac, uh, this is going to be more of just sawn in curves, um, but that way the paper reaches the spine. Now this isn't necessarily the ideal way of doing this, but when people come to you and they have a very small budget, um, you give them options of what you can do, what it's gonna cost, and then they make that decision. And you know, if these books had any real value, probably would have suggested some other techniques. Wow usually doesn't stick like that. So if you're wondering what this material is, um, this is called Rime. It looks a lot like a dryer sheet and it's a uh, it's an interfacing material. Uh, it's uh, very absorbent but it doesn't stick and so when you do things like paper repairs uh, it acts as a release barrier So if you looked at some of my posts this week, um, we have some new formats coming up, um, at least as far as like the title slides and everything. Uh, we're gonna change up the aesthetic, make things a little bit more cohesive. Um, my plans are, uh, I'm gonna make some of my content a little bit more exclusive for our patrons here on Patreon. Um, and then some of it will be kind of advanced preview type of material where you guys will get it weeks 
to a month ahead of the general public or other social media outlets. Uh, and some stuff will just be exclusively for the folks here on Patreon. Uh, But I have some pretty cool ideas on some content for you guys, and we'll talk about that. Uh, on the days that I plan on releasing the content, um, I'm releasing kind of the preview of the title slides uh, or the advertisements. Um, so you can kind of get a feel for what's coming up. Uh, I don't remember the particular order off the top of my head. It's that information's on the computer. But we're going to have, uh, we're going to keep BookForge live on Wednesdays, um, but we're going to move the time slot from 1 to 3 to 6 to 8. Uh, still going to be two hours, but I thought more people would be able to tune in if I did it more towards the evening. Um, I don't know that it really matters, because uh, you can, I, I leave them up, so you can watch the live sessions tomorrow or the day after, and it really won't matter. But uh, I'm really interested in having uh, some feedback and some interaction, and that's just not something that I've been getting with the current time frame. Now, I just don't know if people aren't interested in interacting, or they feel that since they're watching it later that the interaction doesn't count. It doesn't matter when you watch it. If you have questions, comments, criticisms, suggestions, um, esoteric knowledge, uh, put it down in the comments. Start an open dialogue with other folks uh, who are, are members of this particular uh, Patreon page. And um, I love that interaction. I've never met anyone who didn't have something that I could learn from them. And same, same. Uh, maybe you have something that you can teach me, and I, I, I am by no means uh, the definitive authority on bookbinding. I am learning every single day. Uh, sometimes I'll look at something that I've been doing and find out, oh, well, that's not how the rest of the world does it. There's a smarter way, or there's a better way. Or sometimes I find that, hey, my way seems a little bit easier. It's more of a way to skin a cat. I know that's a horrible saying, but... All right, so this is what we got. Uh, so I need to trim these up and get them tipped into the book. And uh, I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, or do we want to do... I think I want to work the other one first. But All right, so I want to get rid of this marble... I feel that it's uh, in the way. I use this marble for paring leather. I have another marble here. over. I'm going to move these guys out of the way. I know, I'm juggling. Sorry. There's that. And I'll bring this cutting mat over. I don't have a monitor in here, so it's really difficult for me to see what's going on on the screen. Um, so forgive me for getting on the phone. Uh, this is the only way that I can see, see what's going on on the screen. 
<laughs> so, so there's a little bit of lag. So I'm going to turn this down and ah, it's not in real time, so I can't see what I just did. Almost caught up. Gotcha. All right. So I always get confused because my right and my lefts get uh, turned around. Okay, that looks about centered, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, I will check back and see if anyone has any comments. Um, This page is just missing. Um, I'm not going to include this page. It's uh, a list of the dead. Well, maybe I should. All right, so I'm going to tip this in. I wonder if this page, I didn't realize it. It's not stuck in here somewhere. I was hoping maybe it would be stuck in like that was. And uh, apparently it's not. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, uh, we're just tip this part of the page back in. There that sits. Um, so we're going to do some sign-in curves. Which I'll need these guys. Back in press. Alright, so sign-in curves are not my favorite way of fixing a book. Uh, but when you have a low budget, um, it is one solution. Um, now I gotta figure out where my tools are. When I say tools, I have uh, saws that are actually from my woodworking shop, which is in the garage, which is barricaded right now. And yeah. Okay. Don't go away, I'll be right back.
Okay, my friends, best laid plans of mice and men. Uh, my saw, God, I have a big one. All right. We're going to do it this way. So you want me to switch? So you have that camera dominant, uh, or, or are you just fine with this? I think you'd be fine with the, the wide view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut. So with the curves, you can put as many in as you like. Um, the whole idea is you make a cut, and then you glue out the spine, and you recess a cord into the glued curves. Now, a kerf is a woodworking term. All right, so I got one, two, three, four, five. Now, there is a way of doing a kerf where you do dovetails and you put it, a cut in that way and a cut in that way. Uh, this book is relatively small. I don't necessarily see the need for that, but I am gonna put in two more cuts. So essentially, I'm gonna put a kerf in between each sewing station. more than that. So I've got six, seven cuts in there. Um, I think that should be more than enough to hold this book together. Just making sure that each of my cuts is clear. All right. So I usually use a Japanese saw that's a little bit thinner than this blade, uh, but I think this will do just fine. So part of the frustration that I have right now is I can't find anything. I'm not set up and organized in a way that uh, is conducive to a good workflow. Uh, so give me a second. Ah, that was easy. So I'm going to use a hemp cord. And I think for this I will switch over and give you a better view. So give me one second, I'll switch cameras.
Okay, my friends. So, if this were a restoration uh, of a book that I thought had value, uh, or that was possibly going to be restored again in the future, um, I would be using wheat starch for this case. Uh, being that the book is acidic, brittle, and they just want it functional for the kid to read for a while, uh, we are going to go ahead and use PVA, which is not uh, reversible, but I don't see this book being restored in the future. Um, so while I'm gluing out the spine, one of the major things that I'm concerned with is making sure that I get adhesive down in those uh, cuts. That is the goal of this particular exercise. Uh, because it'll be the glue and the cord in these cuts that will ensure that the book is held together. Uh, the alternative would have been to completely dismantle it, mandle it uh, do uh, some necessary paper repairs at the spine, and then re-sewing the book, which uh, would take the cost of my labor way up. And that was not in the budget. So, there we go. We glued out the spine. Now, we're going to put the hemp cord into the curse. Where is Get a nice amount of squeeze out. You know you're doing good. I'm going to do now. I'm just going to go over and I want to make sure that each of those cuts is completely pasted over, glued out. Put the cord in there. And you can do a little bit of stippling action that pushes the adhesive in and onto and into the cord, which is really what we want. So like I said, this isn't my favorite way of restoring a book, uh, but it's economical. And if it's done right, uh, you're gonna end up with a very strong 
binding. If this book was larger, I would have saw saw the curves in um, in a chevron pattern. But uh, the book is small, and I don't really feel it needs that. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry, and then we'll trim these cords off. Just making sure that we're not all right. So I'm going to set this over on the other bench. And what I'm doing here is some of these uh, signatures on the outside got pushed down a bit by the cord. So I'm just propping them up a little so we don't end up with little peaks. in and around that cord, that looks pretty good. All right. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry for a bit. There you go. Set this over on the other bench. And I'm going to switch up the cameras again real quick. and some water. I forget that I can tell this camera to follow me. There we go. That might work out a little bit better for you. Uh, Alright, end papers. Gonna have to vacuum today because I just made a mess, and my wife just loves it when I make messes. All right. So the end papers are on this book. Uh, the client knows that she's gonna lose them. They're just basic. Uh, and papers. And again, uh, just trying to save the original end papers isn't really viable. this. So this uh, particular hmm. so this is a uh, parchment paper. I want to say it is from Talus and it's uh, they call it so like anti-den sheets or something like that. Uh, Pencil. And 
need a blade. I got a blade right here. And I need a ruler, which is right over there. That's going to be 136 millimeters times two. Carry to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So our width is going to be 262 millimeters, and our height. It's going to be 190, five, six, seven, we're going to call that 198, 198 light, and that's going to be our height. All right, uh, so this was, you know, they taped the heck out of it, of course. Uh, set that over there. So this paper, hmm. Okay, our grain direction is this way. And so let's do the height first. So we're going to go 198. Should I sharpen this? Probably should. getting kind of small so what I'm going to do is uh, a little corner up here I'm going to put arrows so I know which way the grain direction was all right and then what I say oh, I need two of these don't I can I get two out of this probably not well maybe two sixty two I'm not a huge fan of uh, polished rulers. Get too much glare. Start from this side. Did 
Did I do that right? 262. I like working in metric. I find that the uh, math is a lot easier being base 10. There's my set of end papers ready for that book. It's half dry. All right, guys, I am going to take a minute, not really, a few seconds. I need to get a glass of water and uh, I'll be right back. Don't go away. Stop the continue. Okay, so we've cut some papers. We've saw sawn in some curves. Glue that is fine. Munched a banana. It'll be another half hour or so before, or even longer. I don't even know if we'll be able to do it in a session. Um, before I can touch that book again. So I guess that leaves me with cleaning these up. You know what, I am... Let me get it something a little bit more surgical. get much more surgical than that. You guys want the uh, table camera? So you can actually see what I'm doing? Should probably do that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get the table camera on top. I wish I could control it from here. So yeah, that's one of the fun things that we're gonna be doing.
Yeah, we'll talk about this for a minute too. And I realize that I showed it to the wrong camera. We're going to talk about this for a minute. Um, so one of the things that we're going to be doing in the coming year is we're going to be having uh, reviews. And so what I'm going to do, this book, uh, let's see, one, two, three, I think there's nine. Uh, it's called Suave Mechanicals, and it's Essays on the History of Book Bindings. It's volume one. And it's put out by the Legacy Press. I think this edition came out in 2013. And I'll tell you what, uh, some really great minds in the book binding, uh, book restoration world uh, put this together. Um, even, I can't even pronounce that name, even Croft, uh, Sylvie Marion, uh, Consuelia uh, Metzinger, uh, Robert Milveski, uh, Julia Miller, Jeff Peachy, uh, Martha Romero, Jennifer Rosner, and John Townsend. Uh, they all wrote essays, and some of these are really cool where... Uh, even wrote the uh, historical repair, recycling, recovering phenomena in Islamic binding in the University of Michigan Library, exploring the codicological evidence. Um, Sobe wrote uh, the protection against the evil eye, uh, votive offering on Armenian manuscript bindings. Um, Consuelia wrote. Um, Colonial Blank Books in Winther Library. Uh, Robert wrote a primer on signed bindings. Uh, Julia Miller wrote, uh, Not Just Another Beautiful Book, A Typology of American Scaleboard Bindings. Jeff Peachy, who I use a lot of his tools, uh, he wrote, uh, Beating, Rolling, and Pressing, The Compression of Signatures in Book Binding Prior to Sewing. And then Martha Romero wrote European Influence on Binding of Mexican Printed Books of the 16th Century. Jennifer Rosner wrote uh, Paper Mache Bindings. I love Paper Mache Bindings. I would love to get a few in my collection or be able to work on a few. But uh, she wrote Paper Mache Bindings, um, Shining in Black and Gorgeous with Pearl and Gold. And then last but not least, John Townsend wrote the 1715 Mohawk Prayer Book, a study of six copies in Colonial American scale board bindings. Um, so what I'll be doing is each week uh, I will read uh, and analyze each of these essays and give you a, summer, a summary and kind of the, the key takeaway points. Um, these books are kind of expensive. Uh, they're like 85 to 120 dollars a piece. I believe there's seven or eight to the series with the most recent one coming out sometime very soon. And uh, yeah, each one just is like packed full of information. And I have other books. Uh, I have Bernard C. Middleton's uh, Restoration of Leather Bindings and a whole bunch of, of really cool books that we're just going to start going through my library. And uh, so you don't have to go buy these books. I will uh, tell you what is in them. Uh, some of them I've read, some of them like this one uh, I have intended on reading. Um, I've glanced through it, I've read pieces of it, but I've never sat down and fully digested the book. So that's going to be a very exciting uh, weekly or bi-weekly session uh, that we're going to be adding to the mix is uh, these book reviews. Um, there will be some video reviews and probably tool reviews. Uh, kind of baked into it. But we're going to start off with this particular book. I have volumes one, two, and three. Uh, I also have books will ple uh, speak plainly and several, there's just a whole bunch. And we've got years worth of material here. So for book lovers, um, uh, book binders, restorers, all kinds of folks, uh, this is a great resource. If you can afford it, I highly recommend getting them and reading them. Um, if not, that information will be here for you. All right, so enough about what's coming in January. I'm going to trim up some of these. Uh, you can see the paper repair 
Now, it's not the most pretty thing in the world. Um, I needed some thinner hanji. Uh, but again, like I said, the budget for this book was almost non-existent. They just wanted it put together so they could read it. And I've already expressed my opinion on that concept. Uh, yeah, so... This paper is highly brittle. I mean, I could spend days uh, doing. Yeah, let's line that up a little bit better so I can. Yeah, I mean, it would for me to fix this book properly. Uh, they're looking at. Small fortune, just in the paper. That's my Loki dog. I think the mailman just dropped some mail off. Now there's ways of, you can use colored hanji or uh, you can use various natural material to, to dye this to match, but that's not going to happen with this particular book. I'm not even sure what to do with this. This is such a mess. And uh, like I said, the budget doesn't exist, so I'm not even sure. Not picking on my clients. Uh, but I just don't understand. No, I don't even have to trim that. Bring this book over, and uh, I'm going to switch the cameras back again real quick. Hey, camera, I'm over here. Hello. Hey, there we go. I knew you'd find me. This particular signature goes on the very back. Uh, this book is very confusing because at the end, this is page 458, and it does. It goes 457, 458. This is, but this is also 458. And it's part of the index, which that's what that is. And this is 457. So there's like two 457s and 458s. And I have no idea what's going on there. Um, it's very confusing. And uh, I don't necessarily like it. So what we're going to do... We're going to put that at the end here, and I think, so 447, this goes in the front. Yeah, so here's another 
457, this is 460, So this is the fun part. Now that I've got everything out of here. So These two are going to go together. Okay, so there's that.
Supprimé. Board. Okay, this one gets tipped into the middle at some point. And then these two go on the front here. Now normally, this is not how I would prefer to do this. Put some glue in there. Now the paste I'm using is a wheat starch. So it is reversible. Normally this would all get sewn together. And I keep iterating this because I don't want you to think this is my normal binding style. Um, I would very much prefer to have sewn this book in some fashion. As it is, it will get the sawn in curves, it will stay together. He'll be able to have the book on his shelf. It'll be more pretty than anything, um, as this is not, the paper is so brittle, every time you touch it, it's trying to fall apart. And uh, that's just not, this book isn't worth rebinding. I know it's horrible for a bookbinder to say something like that, but it's true. So what is this book and why is it important to this gentleman? Uh, this book is History of Erie County. Okay. So there'll be some trimming involved before that's all done. I need to tip in this one sheet, which is out of the middle. But I'll, uh, I'll worry about that when the book is um, handleable, which it is not right now. So it'll be a solid hour or so uh, before I can handle that book. Um, let's see. So we talked about um, the book reviews that we're going to be doing. Um, we're also going to be adding a segment, uh, Book Box of the Week. So I have a personal library. Uh, I, at one point, I wanted to open a, uh, a bookstore, a brick-and-mortar bookshop. And as time is going on, I'm realizing that's probably never going to happen. Um, I've got enough books to get started um, and then cycle in new material. And, uh, I almost, uh, when I was at the Packet Building, I was trying to get into a position where I could rent the 1501 space, uh, have a small bookshop up front with some coffee. Not necessarily a coffee shop, but have coffee available. Um, drip for free and then you know some token amount for uh, barista style, but I was going to have, um, all these, uh, most of my collection are first editions, hard covers. I have almost no, um, paperbacks. I'm not a huge fan of the paperback. I have, um, pretty radical, uh, opinions on them and the downfall of, uh, culture, <laughs> but 
Um, that never happened. Uh, PACA, uh, their values were very different than mine. Um, so I'm not going to get into that other than we just had different values. So I had to go because I, I don't like being a hypocrite. I couldn't stay there and support them when they weren't supporting the people in the building. And yeah, so enough of that. Uh, point is, is I have a shit ton of book in boxes. Some I haven't seen in 10 years or so. Uh, some of them are my own personal collection, stuff that I like to read, uh, things that I'm interested in, fiction, nonfiction alike. Uh, some of the books are stuff that I picked up along the way with the intent of eventually starting a bookshop. Um, I got trash in my pocket. So what we're going to do, and maybe before uh, Christmas, we'll do kind of a demo, but we're going to take a box each week. Uh, I'm going to pull the box out. We're going to unbox it, pack, unpack it. We're going to take a look at each of the books. Um, we're going to talk about, um, we'll look up what their relative, uh, their, what their realized sale values are, uh, what the asking prices are. And uh, whether this book is going to go on my shelf, because I now have empty shelves in, in this room, well, in the next room, uh, or uh, if it's going to be put uh, on eBay or whatever sales channel I choose, um, or if it's going to be sold uh, as like a, a set of pretty books to interior designers and real estate agents, they can buy them in sets of 5, 10, or 20. Uh, and they can use them for staging or, or whatever. Um, or if they just have s such little value that it, it's not even worth it and maybe they get donated uh, or sold as a lot somehow. I haven't really decided on that. Uh, but we'll make that decision on camera. And uh, yeah, so it would kind of be fun because I mean, this is geared more towards uh, not necessarily the book binders, but the uh, the bookish people who just really enjoy books. Um, you'll see a wide range of books um, from antiquarian to just old, interesting topics. That, uh, it's like, wow, they actually wrote a book on that? Um, yeah, so we'll kind of talk about them that way. So that's another uh, session that I have uh, planned for the new year. And uh, I'm trying to remember some of the other ones off the top of my head, and it's not, it's not coming to me. Ah, all right. You know, I don't want to rush this book, but it's dry enough to touch. Um, I'm going to make a point of not opening it because uh, I'm sure inside the curse is still drying. But I think it's dry enough that I think we can go ahead and cut these cords. And maybe put the end papers on it. So do you guys want me to switch cameras? I keep asking you this, and I know you're not answering, but here, let me uh, let me switch cameras real quick. All right, so one of the things that I'm trying to use the funds from Patreon for is to get equipment. And I had equipment set up, and I was getting to the point at the, uh, the PACA building where I had my overhead camera, and I, I was able to place, you know, I had two or three cameras going at the same time. In this new room, in this new format, I don't have the space for a lot of stuff. And so now I need to figure out, you know, I don't have the piping overhead to hang a camera from or my microphone. Um, so I'm using the microphones uh, on the webcam and I'm going through my streaming software 
and I'm, I'm playing with the dynamics and hopefully getting a better sound than I have been historically. Uh, but one of the things that I need to do is I need an over the table rig of some sort to hold a camera and a microphone so I can have different angles on this. Um, I also, I was going to set it up so my switch was here just off, off of your site and I got all my cables in place and working except for the streaming device requires being hooked up to the internet and my ethernet cable is a 20 footer and apparently I need a 30, 35 footer because my router is at the far end of the next room. So one of the next things I'm going to purchase uh, when I deliver some of these books is a longer ethernet cable to reach the router to over here. That way I don't have to keep leaving the room because I know that's a, annoying when you, you look at the screen and well, there's no book binder. Where the hell's the honey badger binder? What in the actual, what's going on here? So with all that being said, I'm gonna go switch cameras and then I come back and cut these ports. We're at the overhead camera now, or at least as overhead as I can get with this setup. So I apologize. You know the drill. So you want to cut these pretty much flush with the shoulder. You don't want to cut into the book. Doing my best not to. I don't want to poke the pages either. I did there. There we go. We got a little bit of. Come on, let go. There. All right, so there we are. So these are still drying a little bit on the inside, but this is pretty much dry. Uh, oh, shoot. Okay, that came up short. I'm good height-wise, but I lost something in the width. All right, well, measure twice, cut once, and we failed that particular lesson. So I'm going to, well, poop. Since this is drying, I'm going to move this over to the other table. I'm going to bring back that sheet. Forgive me for being off camera again. over with that. Oh. All right. So there must have been enough material missing from that end paper that I measured to cause some grief. So here we go again. Come on, how many out there completed that hearing white snake? Right, okay, never mind. Never mind. Am I the only one that has a soundtrack playing and every time someone says a particular word or catchphrase, music starts playing? Yeah. Okay, just me. It's just me. All right, so...
So the height was good. So we're going to do the 198. Ninety-five, six, seven, eight. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. I could use either or. I know my arm is probably eclipsing the work. I apologize. Again, we'll work on getting some sort of overhead rig set up. Uh, so the only thing that's going to be cutting off the work will be my big fat head. All right. With that. All right. So. Let's get a measurement from the actual book. So let's bring this over. So the measurement I'm getting is 135, and that is to the shoulder. And then the shoulder. I call that three millimeters. So we, I said 135, and then the shoulder is three. So five, six, seven, eight, three, 138, but I need that times two. Two times eight is 16, carry the one. Two times three is six, seven. So that's 276. Helps if I write down the right uh, the right number. So I'm coming up with 276, where I had 262 before. All right, so 276. That is the number that we're striving for. Let's put this back on. Put that back on. All right, so two. 75 to 76. So you notice I make my marks with the blade. And the reason for that is I find that pencils tend to leave a wide mark. And you can be off by half a millimeter or a millimeter uh, or more just because on, you're on the right side of the fat mark here, you're on the left side of the fat mark here, and you end up with this slightly off cut. And uh, when you're dealing with especially nicer bindings, fine bindings, um, you want your work to be as exact as possible. And there we go, that's a lot better. So, turn this around. 275, 276. So over the next couple of days, um, I will be posting about the different uh, content that we're going to have, and each. So I'm going to schedule like, you know, whatever I posted on Monday. Well, that's the stuff that's going to be coming out on Mondays. And my goal is a weekly format uh, for each uh, topic, uh, but the reality of it is um, 
they'll probably be bi-weekly, except for the Book Forge Live, which will maintain a weekly format. Uh, but there's just I'm one person, and uh, I can only do so much if I'm in my bindery and I'm binding books and uh, you know making money to pay my rent, my bills, and feed my family. Uh, producing content is difficult. Excuse me. I didn't mean that. So let's, you know what, I'm going to use PBA for this. Thin brush. I'm still here. I know I went off camera again. And a slice of paper. So this is going to be roughly five sixteenths. You don't really want to do more than that, but given what we're working with, I want to have plenty of surface area for this to adhere to. I will roughen up the corners and the edges to match the rest of that book. I like using my finger for this once I press it in with the bone folder because while well, it gets glue on it, that'll be in the paste down so I'm not worried about it. Um, the softness of your finger helps find the natural texture or shape of the shoulder. Now, as we progress, I'll have the bindery a little bit more organized and uh, we'll be walking around looking for stuff as much. I'll get that networking cord so I can actually have the uh, switch in here so I won't have to leave the room. Uh, all that good stuff, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so these guys have to dry for a while. So there you go. So I don't have a lot more right now. Uh, I need to get some stuff organized for more work to do on the bench. Uh, so I'm going to leave you here, and uh, here, let's switch back to the other camera so I can say goodbye face to face. And uh, hey, here you are. All right, so looking forward to doing a lot of stuff. 
Uh, I know I've been off and on with the, uh, the weekly live session. Um, I will be falling in to a better pattern now that things are starting to settle. Uh, that room is still a mess. I'm going to try and work on this room a little bit more, uh, get things where I can find them. Um, I had one of my apprentices reach out and wanted to know uh, she's had her own life going on. And uh, she, so she's been gone for many months now. And uh, I'm talking about Sharon. Um, so uh, she may be coming back in January uh, to start helping out again, uh, resume her education. Um, yeah. So that's about all I have. Uh, the only other thing I've got going on is um, I think last session I showed you uh, a Dragon Scale book that I was working on. So I started playing around with uh, more traditional materials. So the wrap, the protective cover that it attaches to, and then I've started putting in, uh, this is a, a rice paper. Uh, so we'll see what this looks like all filled out. Now this one still is going to be blank. I don't have any printed. Uh, I need a lot of ink for one, but I got to see if my printer will even print on rice paper. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of my printer. Um, I'm going to retire it as soon as I have the finances and hopefully get something a little bit better. Uh, it's adequate at the moment, sort of, mostly, but I'm not fighting with it. Uh, if you've ever seen Office Space, they all want to be a gangster scene. That's what's going to happen to that printer. Uh, <laughs> all right, my friends. This is Edward the Honey Badger Binder of Book Forge, and this has been Book Forge Live. Uh, we'll see you again next week, Wednesday at 1 p.m. Uh, when we get into December, um, the Wednesday of the week of Christmas, I will not be online. And... I need to look at the calendar. I may not be online the first week in January. Uh, next session, I'll sure up those dates. So those are going to be planned outages. Um, I will plan on having some other form of content available. Uh, in the next couple days, I will be putting uh, part seven of the Family Heirloom, it was a 1850 Family Heirloom Bible, the Restoration Project. So yeah, part seven needs to go into the editing bay and I'll get that out to you. I've also got some other cool stuff. But tomorrow, uh, I showed you that medical journal that I broke into from one big, thick, six, seven inch book to two, three inch books, uh, volumes. Um, so tomorrow I'll be releasing an article uh, that shows the before and after, and then I go through and I describe my process. Um, it's not an actual tutorial. You'll get a very 35,000 foot view on what I did, but from what the book started out to what it looks like now, uh, it's definitely worth taking a look at. Uh, so take a look for that tomorrow. I think uh, it's due to drop at 10 o'clock. Uh, I got some other stuff lined up, uh, but all right. Thank you. You have a great day.